Hello everyone! Welcome back to Art Impressions Watercolor Wednesday. This is guest designer Kendra Krebs bringing you a little Easter wreath idea. So what I've done in this one is employ the Molotov liquid latex to get these really cute little flowers in here and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So let's get started. I'm going to take a piece of watercolor paper and like I showed you before, I am going to just use a round shaped object to draw my wreath guide, okay? So I'm gonna take that and then I'm gonna immediately get into my Molotov. Make sure you shake that up really good. And if you noticed in the main um, card here, uh, this side is larger or has a more dense foliage than this side. And I like that because I like my wreaths to be asymmetrical. And so I just want to keep that in mind as I'm doing my Molotov. And I'm going to start with a dot at the bottom and then a dot where I'm going to end. So we're working on this side and then I want to put a little guide about how wide I want my foliage to go out so that when I do my little dots, I can kind of graduate from small to large and then large to small as I go up. So I'm gonna start here and I'm just putting these dots in arbitrarily because these are going to be our flowers and there are going to be a lot. So as you can see, as I'm moving up, I'm getting thinner and thinner something like that. So it's almost a diamond shape on that side. And then on this side, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm still gonna end up here. And then maybe these will be a little bit thinner. So I'm going to, once again, put in a whole bunch of my little floral dots. And you can make them really dense or more sparse. It's up to you. If they're dense, they're more obvious. Like they're, yeah, they're more obvious. <laughs> you can see them better. There's just, um, they kind of hold your attention, I guess, as opposed to being sort of something in the background. They become more noticeable when you do a lot of them. However, I will say when you do a lot of them, you do have to go in and I'll show you how with your little yellow marker and put in all the centers. So the more you do, the more centers you will have to do, okay? So I'm gonna put this aside and pick up one that is already dry so that we can go ahead and move on. This generally doesn't take long to dry, maybe a few minutes, but you do wanna make sure it is really, really dry to the touch before you move on to the next portion, okay? Oh, I forgot to show you the stamps I'm gonna use today. How hilarious, I don't think I've ever done that. Um, so the stamps, I looked over to my left and saw the pile and was like, oh, <laughs> I think I forgot something. <laughs> so today we're gonna use the teeny tiny grass. So little pause here on the project, the teeny tiny grass in the foliage set 4051. And then I'm also using the two little vines here from foliage set four the little uh, Basket of Blessings Easter set. I'm gonna use the Happy Easter here. And this set is so cute. You may already have that one, it's really, really popular. And then I'm also going to use the these two little bunnies here from the Watercolor Bunny set. Okay, back to the project. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me on that. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna grab my little bunny who's standing up. He's gonna be in the foreground, so I'm gonna stamp him first. And I'm gonna use number 969 and just ink him. My goodness, you guys. I am so glad you stick around. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ink him and then notice I didn't ink a lot of his feet because he's going to be standing in grass, so there's no need to do that. I'm gonna stamp him down just like so. And I'm gonna put a mask. I just cut this out using like printer paper. You can use sticky paper if you want to, it's up to you. It doesn't really matter to me as long as I have something to kind of help me put, uh, you know, a mask so that I can put stamps behind. 
So I'm gonna take him and then I've got my little mask placed and I'm gonna stamp him behind. Notice I didn't even color his backside because I know that that's not even gonna be seen. So I went ahead and just left that off and now I have him behind, set behind the little front guy. I'm gonna take my brush and let me show you, it's been a while since I've showed you, sorry, my water's a little bit dirty. I do a lot of projects before I clear my water. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna dip once, wipe once, and just gently reshape. It doesn't, you don't need to have, you know, a lot of water on here. It doesn't need to be dripping off, and actually it shouldn't be. So just a little bit of water, that's a really nice, neutral place to start. Dip once, wipe once, reshape your brush, and then you can begin to pull out the color in your little bunnies or whatever image you're doing. So I'm going to just pull a little bit of this color out of the edge to get this little guy going. I do wanna leave highlights and you can still see his feet. <laughs> I think that's just from the last time I stamped him, which is fine. It's not a big deal. The less we worry about stuff like that, the more fun we're gonna have. And it really doesn't matter because the grass is gonna go there and you're not even gonna be able to see his feet. And I'm gonna pull out the color on this little guy. I'm gonna give him kind of a little blaze down the front of his face. I just love doing that for bunnies. I think it's so cute. Okay. So notice I'm not doing a whole bunch on these guys. They're gonna be really, really simple, okay? I'm gonna take my 725, 725, and I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that pink for their cheeks and their ears. You could easily do darker ears. That's really common with bunnies. You can do just a darker brown inside. If you want it to look a little bit more whimsical, you can do this pink. And then we'll put it on their little cheeks too, something like that. And now I'm going to move on from the bunnies and then come back when they're dry. We'll put in their whiskers and darken their eyes and all that good stuff. But we want this color to dry completely first before we move on to the next step. Now I'm going to take my 177 and my teeny tiny grass this I use all the time, as I'm sure you've noticed by now. It's like one of my favorite stamps. And I'm gonna take this grass and just put it around their feet. Kind of dense in here. I do want a good amount of grass. And I'll just kind of bring it up following my guide. There's a reason we put that circle in, right? So that we can get that nice wreath shape, that nice circle shape, okay? Now I'm gonna take my brush and just begin to pull out some of this grass. And I'm just pulling out a little bit past the grass. I'm not staying in the lines because if I stay in the lines, the stamp is still gonna look like a stamp. But if I pull out of the lines, it's gonna to begin to look more uh, free-handed and watercolor painted. Well, it is watercolor painted, but more free-handed. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to take the 969 and I'm just going to put a little bit of that into the grassy area just to kind of give us a nice base. And I always find this just makes the grassy area look a little bit richer. So something like that. Okay, now we're going to put in our sides here. And this is a really fun part. The only thing you really, really want to keep in mind is that whatever is covering the blue needs to be really, really dense. Because if you haven't worked with liquid latex before, um, it is it, it sort of reserves the space where you're stamping. Um, and then when you wipe it off, it's left white. So it's kind of a protective covering for that area, whatever area you're trying to leave open. So for example, like in my in my demo project here, the the little white areas where the yellow is, those are where the liquid latex was and I wiped it off and it left it in a white circle, which you will see. But if you can see how dense this greenery is here, uh that's so that the white circles 
are actually seen. So when we go in, we need to really make sure that's really dense, okay? So I'm using the mirrored vines for this, and I'm using this one because it's gonna go that way, and then this one on this side because it's gonna go that way, okay? So I'm gonna ink this and just begin to stamp on here and I want it to be, once again, really, really thick when I go and stamp these in. So I can stamp less times to get a really nice dense green in those areas. If you are struggling with knowing where the vine is heading, you can put the tip of the vine into the corner of the acrylic block and then use that as a guide. See where the point is? So if I wanna go more left, I go left. If I wanna go more right, I go right. So you can use that corner as a guide to kind of tell you where the tip of your vine is heading. And at the top, I'm going to get thinner and thinner because I want kind of the points to meet from each side of this wreath. So something kind of like that. And then I'll kind of stick some of the points out just so it's not so just like a block of green going around. I do want some branches to stick out independently. But what I really want to do is just make sure that most of those blue dots are covered. And we'll make sure too when we add our water but the first step in doing that is to make sure that they're covered with the stamp. I'm gonna go one more up here, make sure that's nice and dark. So you can see we've got a really dense wreath going around that side. And then we're gonna do the same on this side. So remember this side was the longer, thicker side. And then this is gonna be the shorter, thinner side. And if you want this to be symmetrical, go ahead. That's totally up to you. That's kind of one of those things where it's like just preference, you know? If you want them to be really even and that's your preference, there is nothing wrong with that. That's definitely not the focal point of this project. I just want to show you how to use this Molotov to make this really, really cute floral kind of Easter wreath and then um, give you another wreath idea as well, even if you didn't use the Molotov, even if you wanted to do just your normal garland, you could totally do that with the other flowers that we've used in previous videos and uh, different foliage even. Use what you have. So this, this foliage is really, really dense. Um, like I've said about a hundred times now. So this is really dense. You really could use um, a lot of the different foliages in, in the watercolor series. It doesn't have to be this one. I just kind of chose this because it was a mirrored image and it was kind of nice to be able to go up the left with this one and then go up the right with the other one. Okay, now I've got my greenery in and we're gonna start adding our water and keeping in mind those blue dots we want those covered so this is going to be really again dense in this area because once we take those blue dots off if i have a lot of highlights in the center those blue dots which will then be white once we rub off the latex they're going to disappear because i didn't um, make the color around them dense enough so if I don't have this dense enough, they will disappear and then it will kind of be like for nothing, putting all those dots in, because you won't see them if you leave too many highlights in the center. Some are okay, but you don't want to leave a ton. Okay, so I'm gonna just bring this up. Now that I have the majority of the center in, now I can bring my brush and loosen up some of these outer branches. I don't, like I said, I don't want like a pillar of green going up. I do want it to still be light and airy. And I can do that by touching some of these independent branches out here to kind of break up the thickness of that green. And you could always come in with another green too if you wanted like the, you know, the 249 to kind of help break up that color too. You could totally do that. All right, other side. And we are going to 
dab, dab, dab all along here. And nice and thick green. I'm using a pretty good amount of water. Still the same, it, you know, it's it's pretty close to the same amount, but I'm not wiping up wiping as much off with my fingers. I'm just kind of letting that water flow a little bit more. And it's really important when you're doing that to really make sure your color is dry. The water is completely dry before you start trying to take off these uh, blue dots because you will rip your paper. Okay. And I've got pretty much most of those covered in green. And I'm going to now take my brush and while that's drying, I'm going to add in my little flowers up here and then also my sky and my sentiment. By that time, this should be dry and we should be able to erase out those liquid latex dots. I'm going to take number 565, which is this really dark blue. And I'm just going to ink a little bit of that. It's not going to be the whole thing. You can see it's just this. I don't need this whole stamp, so I'm not going to use it all. I'm just going to use some of these that are more clustered on here and just stamp a few of them in near the bunnies. And then I will put in my sky, which is going to be my 528. I love this one. Five, oops, 528. Oops. So we'll take our brush, dip once, wipe once, reshape, and grab that blue. So when I'm doing the sky, I'm going to do thinner on this side and then thicker on the smaller side. So then it kind of balances out the asymmetrical shape of the wreath and it gives, um, it just makes it feel a little bit more balanced as opposed to like one side heavy. So I'm going to take my blue and just kind of start in here. Now you'll notice I didn't touch the blue flowers with water. I do want that detail in there. So that was on purpose. I don't always touch everything with water. Sometimes it's nice to have something a little bit more detailed in there. And that was kind of the thought behind that. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that blue and just kind of stick close to this edge here. And I'm just dabbing this, just dabbing it with a little bit of that blue and a little bit of water right now. I only have water just to move around some of that thicker color. And then I'll take that blue again and go up further on this side so if it's if if the color is really dense where the line is just take your water and break it up so for example if i come in with a really hard line kind of like that and i'm like oh no what do i do i just take a little bit of water only wipe it off and then i'm just going to come in and just help push that edge out and distribute more of that color to take away from the harshness. Do you see that? Now you can barely even see that that was even there. Take a little bit more blue and kind of put it in here. And I'm getting this really nice blue sky. Put a little bit more in here. And as you can see, it's more concentrated up this way, but the green is more concentrated up that way. And I'm hoping you can see that it's coming through the camera. Okay, now I'm gonna put in my sentiment, which is just the Happy Easter from the Darling set, which one was it? The Basket of Blessings set. And I'm gonna take my 969 and just color Happy Easter with the 969. And you could use, you could do your stamp perfect for this or whatever you want to use. I just kind of go for it because I don't need it to be like perfect, perfect. 
Okay, so happy Easter. And then I'm gonna take my twin tone in the brown and just kind of help even out some of the letters that maybe didn't come across as dark as some of the other ones. And this is just a nice backup, especially when you're working on watercolor paper. You know, a lot of that uh, toothiness of the watercolor paper can, can kind of lead to an uneven stamp, which for all of these is totally fine. But sometimes for your sentiment, you want it to be nice and even. So I will just generally come in with my twin tone and just fix that right up. Now I'm going to take, make sure that this is dry and yes, it is dry. So I can now erase out those Molotov dots. Do you see how those are coming out white now as I erase? And I'm also erasing that wreath uh, kind of frame that I drew in with my pencil or my guide. I'm erasing my guide. So you can see now side by side, you can see all the little white dots in there and maybe I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can really get a good idea of how that looks. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side with my eraser. And I can use my eraser because it's dry. If it wasn't dry, I'd be ripping my paper so badly right now. I'm going to come around all the way around and just erase that guide that I drew in previously. Okay, how cute. Now I'm going to take the 993 detail tip and just this part takes a minute <laughs> to get all of your little white dots filled in or not filled in but just given a little center. So this is kind of the flower center and you're going to go and do all of the little dots that you made. So this is what I mean when I was like, well, make sure you do only as many as you want to fill in because <laughs> it does take a minute. Um, I think I got them all. We'll see if you can find any that I missed. And then, oops, I've got a few more on here that I didn't erase. So I'm going to just fill in once again, or not fill in. We're going to give them just the little centers on this side. Whatever you do on the other side, you do, well, whatever you do on one side, you do on both sides. How's that? <laughs> okay. And if I didn't fill this in as densely as I did, I would not be seeing all the little dots. All the little white dots would not have come through had I not filled that in, okay? Now let's finish up our bunnies with our twin tone. And you always wanna fill in the nose and the eye on any animal that you do because it just brings them to life. See how much more lively they are? And then bunnies have whiskers. So we'll give them some little whiskers here. And you can fill in any areas that you wanna Kind of see be a little bit darker so I can bring in a little bit more shadow on these areas here and then while my pen is in my hand always sign your work and I always put the year as well so I hope that you enjoyed this project and if you try it let me know if you are not subscribed and you enjoyed this video please subscribe below give us a thumbs up and check us out on Instagram, and I will see you guys later. Have a great week. Bye.